Hello and welcome. The focus of this course are the business reports that you see in the business tab where you can actually look at your cash position, you can look at your profit position, and you can look at your asset balance. Now there is a difference between these statements that you're looking at and those that prepare you for tax time. The goal of a tax statement is typically to reduce the amount of income that you would have and report to the government so that you would pay less tax. On the other hand, the goal of your financial statements, including the profit and loss statement, cash flow, as well as balance sheet, is to reflect accurately what's happening in your business so that you can make good decisions. There are two assumptions that follow. First, you should not rely on these profit and loss statements, balance sheets, or cash flow statements in order to assume that you are compliant with the taxing authorities. At the same time, you should not rely on your taxing statements to reflect whether or not your business is profitable or whether or not your cash position is sufficient. Tax statements depend on what entity your company is as well as how you report your taxes. You will want to work with a tax professional in order to assure that Quicken is accurately reflecting on an everyday basis where your tax position is. So Quicken answers very well questions like, was the month of October profitable? Or is our cash position sufficient in order to make a big purchase in December? All of those questions can be answered by the analysis we'll be doing in this course. We do not in this course focus on your personal finances. And that's because we really want to limit the scope of the course so that we can put together a financial statement to determine whether or not we're doing well at our business. Because if our business is profitable, then we can impact our personal finances with planning and professional help. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to work through the process of using Quicken to track the activity when we actually do contract work. And to do that, we're going to go to the Business tab, and then we're going to come over to this right side menu, and we're going to go to the business actions area. We're going to go to invoices and estimates. And what we're going to do is we're going to click the create an invoice link. Now, when that happens, for the first time, Quicken will tell you that you're going to need to create an invoice or receivables account. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to give the account a name. And then we're going to click Next. Quicken will now tell you that you have set up an accounts receivable and you can enter any invoices, payments, credits, or refunds in the invoices register. So once we've done that, we're going to click Finish. And what we're going to do then in creating the invoice is we're going to write in the customer or the company. You're probably going to be working with a specific job or a specific project and you want to write the name of that project in the next square. Now Quicken has several layouts that you can actually create and customize. We're going to use the default layout and in another video we'll show you how to customize the default layout. You'll notice that the invoice has a number. You can actually change that if you want to to something else. You'll note that there is a date that the invoice is sent and you can actually change the due date so that you can say that the invoice is actually going to be due perhaps 24 hours after it has been sent. So we can change the due date. Once we've done that, we can actually write in to the line item the services that we are actually offering. And so we can write in here what the services are and we can give it a dollar amount. Now when you create a category for the first time, Quicken is going to give you a menu. You can actually give this a category or a tag. We're going to call this business income. And then we're going to go ahead and write a description in here. And what's important is that you continue to use these categories in the future. Now we can make this taxable. We can also do it so that it is per item. If We want to be a little more detailed or we do not have to. Once we've done that, we can then click OK. 
or we can just place in the amount category what we have negotiated. Once we've done that, we can actually also do any other line item that we want to add. Now that we have our invoice completed, we can write a message to the customer. We can then write a memo to ourselves, give us more detail on the circumstances surrounding the particular job. Now, if we have to add in lines for the invoice, we can actually do that. You'll notice that we click in the add lines just in case we need to itemize more. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click the email or send to clipboard. Now, if this is a new project, then Quicken will allow us to create a project inside of its system called Quicken Video Creation. And in this case, we can click no. We don't necessarily want to click a brand new job. Now, of course, if you want to track at that level of detail, you can certainly do so. What we're going to do now is we're going to click email, send to clipboard. We're going to get a dialog box that says Quicken wants to create a new project or job. We're going to say yes. We can actually determine what the project status is, or we can leave this blank if we don't want to go to that level of detail. We can determine when a project is going to be over or when it actually ends. Once we've determined all those things, we're going to click OK for the project. Now, Quicken is going to allow us to send this invoice by email using our default email program. So what we're going to do is we're going to click OK, and then our default email program, in the case of this video, it's going to be Microsoft Outlook. Whatever you're using on your PC is what you will actually have open. We're going to click now OK. Quicken will then give you a warning. You can allow access and then click allow. What's going to happen now is that your default email program is going to open up and you will then be able to send this invoice with anything else that you want to put into the email. And we can actually open the invoice to take a look at it. So when your client actually gets the invoice and opens it, this is what it will actually look like. Now in another video, we're going to actually show you how you can customize this default invoice. And once the invoice has been sent, you can click Save and Done. What you would see then is you would see the actual invoice inside of a register for all of your video creation clients. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to customize our invoice that we're going to be sending to clients. We're mainly going to work with the default form, even though you can create as many invoice forms or types as you like. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this business area. And then we're going to go to the business actions. And we're going to pull the drop down menu. And we're going to go to the invoices and estimates. And then we're going to go to design invoice forms. This will open up a dialog box that will bring to you the default menu. So you, what you want to do is you'll want to design this form in the manner that you like. For example, if you'd rather not use a logo, you don't have to, or you can use a logo. If you'd like to put your company address in your invoice, you can do that. In some cases, if you're an online business, you may not want to do that. If you want to change the fonts, you can do so. Now the main thing that you'll want to take a look at here is that each section of this invoice is customizable. So for example, you'll notice that if we highlight the total box and we were to go to the layout menu and we were to go to the item menu and we would go to properties, we can actually customize each one of the boxes that we highlight. For example, if we wanted to use sales tax, we could do that. If we want to take the sales tax back out, we can do that. If we want to work with a specific layout in this area, we can do that. We can do that by going to the properties area. And for example, if we 
find that quantity or rate is irrelevant, then we can take that out of our invoice. And you'll notice here, then we just have a description and we have the amount. So what you want to do is you want to customize the invoice to fit your business. Again, if you're an online business, then the ship to address, that would not be relevant. You can take that out. If you find the logo is not exactly what you want, you can actually go into this box and you can customize it. Or you can decide not to have it at all. The logo will be taken out. And once you determine that the default menu fits your specifications, you can actually go to the layout and then you can click save. Now it could be that you want to create an entirely new layout and you want to create a second default invoice. You would go to the layout tab and then you would click new. It would ask you what kind of layout type you'd want. You can do an invoice, estimate or credit, whatever one you'd like to have. You would give it a name. You can give it a portrait or landscape orientation and then you can click OK. And then the same customization elements we spoke of previously would be in place. If you want to take something out, you can click on it, go to the item tab, go to the properties, take out sales tax again, and you can take out the ship to address or leave it in. So anything that you want to do with this invoice that fits your business, you can actually do. Once you have created the invoice that you want, you go to the layout and then you click save. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now we have a case where the client has looked at the work and they have decided that the first portion they are ready to remit payment for. And so you can account for that in Quicken. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the video creation client's account receivable window. And then we're going to click on category. And you're going to notice that there is a box at the bottom that says receive payment. We're going to go ahead and click that link. So we're now going to write in the fact that the client has paid part of the funds that they did it by check and what we're going to do is we're going to write a memo in here telling ourselves what it is that actually happened. Now when this check comes in it has to go someplace so we're going to work with this deposit window and we're going to place it in our business checking account. And so what we're going to do is we're going to apply 2700 to the overall invoice and then we're going to click enter. So what you'll notice now is the $2,700 reflected on the invoice that there's a $300 balance and if we were to go to our balance sheet we would be able to see this $2,700 and we'd see it mainly reflected in the increase in the business checking account. We can actually go to our income statement and see the same thing. And we actually now see for the month to date that there is a $2,700 sale item in our income statement. Because we are simplifying our statement, we are working primarily on a cash basis. And so our cash flow statement will be much the same as our income statement. And so you'll see that the cash inflows as of the middle of the month are still $3,200 and the expenses are primarily the same. And one of the things that you may have noticed is that our remaining invoice for video creation clients still has a balance of $300 but is currently not on our balance sheet. And you can see that here. And that is because by default Quicken will only show you the cash method of accounting for your balances. Now you can actually change that designation to accrual by going to the Customize tab, then going to Advanced, and then changing your reporting basis to accrual. 
Now again, anything that you want to do in terms of reporting for taxes, you do want to check with your tax professional before you make a change. However, if you're just looking at these reports internally to accurately reflect what you actually have, what you have coming in and going out, this is another way of being able to do that. So we're going to click OK. And what you'll see here under other assets is an account receivable called Video Creation Clients. It's $300 and considered to be an asset and actually raises your total assets by that $300. Now again, if all you want to reflect is the cash that you see coming in and the cash that you've actually had coming into your bank account because that is more accurate to you, then you can go to the Customize tab, you can go back to Advanced, and then you can click the Cash button and click OK. And then you'll see that the total other assets are no longer reflected. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, you may encounter a situation where you have to issue either a full or partial refund for some of the work that you have completed. And in that particular case, what you're going to need to do is to go into your business area. And then you're going to go to the business actions. And then you're going to go to your invoices. And then you're going to go to the link that says issue a refund. Now we can actually choose the account where we're going to pay this from. But in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to have this paid from our business checking account. We're going to determine who the customer is and we'll just use the drop down arrow and we'll see that we've got one customer there. And then we can actually write in the project or the job. And to do that, we're going to use the drop down arrow. Now we can actually do a refund for the amount that is appropriate for the situation. So in this particular case, we're going to do a refund of $200. and click enter. So what we've done here is that we are going to pay from our business checking account $200. We're going to pay it back to Thomas Duncan and we're now going to click enter. Now when you do hit the enter button, Quicken is going to give you a warning that says that the refund exceeds the total amount of credits and payments for the customer. Now we are going to need to issue a credit to the account. So we're going to say yes, we want to record this anyway. And you're going to notice that $200 has been refunded, but the customer's balance is now $500 instead of $300. So their balance actually went up in terms of what they owe us unless we issue a credit. So what we're going to do is we're going to issue a credit to the same account. We can do that by going to this business menu and then going to issue a credit from the business actions. We're going to look for the customer and we can write in the job. And what we can do is we can actually write in the actual project. We're going to write in the amount of the credit, which is $200. And then we're going to click enter. Now, just as we did with the invoice, we can choose to email this to the customer so that they'll actually have record of it also. We're not going to do it for the sake of this video, but you'll know that you can actually do that as well as to write in a customer message on the actual credit memo. We're then going to click enter. So in order to properly account for a refund, for a client that you have invoiced, you'll need to give them a credit for the same amount that you have actually given them the refund for. Now, in another situation, we could actually give a credit for more than the actual refund amount, and we'll actually cover that in the next video. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. In addendum to the last video, you'll notice that when we made the transfer to the cash on hand, we actually did not pay Barnes & Noble at that point. And so what we want to do in the case of the transfer is we want to make sure that there was no payee 
for that transfer. Now, in this particular case, it would make sense for us to keep the memo so that we know it was associated with the transfer. We could write more details in there on actually what the transaction was. Once we've done that, we will not be double counting money that we spent with Barnes & Noble. We'll actually just have spent the 21 for the actual books. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click Save. And with that, we have fully accounted for the transaction. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. As you can see, Quicken greatly simplifies keeping the personal and business transactions that you do separate and organized. And you'll often find yourself in some cases where you'll be using personal funds in order to purchase something for your business. And so when that is the case, you would be using a personal account, and this is indicated here in this account that's called Checking 2. You'll see that it's not part of the business. And if we go to the Checking 2, and you'll notice that there is a $700 balance there. However, what you did was you went to purchase books from a bookstore. And you'll notice that these books are going to be accounted for through the business account, Business Supplies. So we're going to now click Save. Now by default, if we were to look at the reports for our business and we were to take a look at the business account and we were to take a look at the balance sheet, what we'll notice is that the account called Checking 2 with now $678 is actually considered to be a business asset. And that's actually not what we want to happen. Because this is a personal account, we like to keep this separate from our business assets. And so what we do is we go to the tools area. We then go to manage hidden accounts. And then you'll notice that there is a box here that says keep this account separate. We would click that box and then we'd click done. If you go back now to your financial statement and you go to the business area and you go to the balance sheet, what you'll notice now is that that account is no longer being counted as a business asset. So in order to account for this properly, what we would do is we would go back to the personal checking account and you'll see here that the category still says that this purchase was made for business supplies from our personal account. And we could leave it that way and it would be perfectly fine for our business financial statements. However, technically what we did at that transaction was we really transferred funds into our business. And so the most correct way to do this would be to change this category to a transfer to our cash on hand and then to click save. What that's going to do, you'll notice, is that that's going to change our business cash on hand account. It's actually going to go up now by $21. So now what we'll need to do is on the 18th, so we'll actually need to then create an outgoing transaction saying that we spent funds from our cash on hand account. And so all we do here is we write in Barnes & Noble, we then write in the correct category. In this particular case, this is a business expense. We would then leave this as $21 that we actually spent. And then we'll click Save. But what's going to happen is that we're actually going to have a transaction there that occurred where we had $21 that was actually spent from our business account. But we properly reflected the fact that we actually took money out of our personal account, we put it into our business, and then we spent it out of the business in order to purchase the books. Now again, you could avoid all of that and just do the very simple transaction of making sure that you account for the fact that you spent personal funds for your business. However, the most correct way to reflect this would be that you put money into your business and then you use that money to actually purchase your business books. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. And as you can see, the client with this invoice 
actually still owes $300, and that's after the invoice, that's after the payment, that's after the refund, and after the credit. And what we could do is we could decide that we want to issue this customer a credit for the rest of their balance so that we affect do the work and the customer will not owe us for the remaining balance. And so in order to do that, we can actually go back to issue another credit. And we can do that from the business tab and we'll go to our business actions. We'll go to our invoices and estimates and then we're going to issue a credit. And what we're going to do is we're going to issue the credit to the same client. We're actually going to issue the credit for $300. Basically, we've decided to offset the cost of the second part of the invoice, which for the sake of this example was called video editing. So we're going to now click enter. You'll notice now that that credit is $300. We would go ahead and email this to the client. We're not going to do that on this video. And what we're going to do now is we're going to click enter. So what you'll notice now is that the client actually owes nothing else on this particular invoice and they've actually paid everything that they're going to pay. And if we look at the month to date income statement, We'll notice that there is $2,500 now instead of $2,700. If we actually drill down, we would be able to see the transactions that make up that $2,700, which is basically the $2,700 less the $200 credit. And if you were to look at the balance sheet, you'll notice that the video creation assets is now at a zero balance, which means that we no longer have an account receivable or money that we expect to have coming in. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to be discussing what happens when you account for products that you sell on an affiliate network like JVZoo or Warrior Plus. You have an affiliate to promote that product and then make a sale and earn sales commissions. And there are going to be several transactions related to this and you want to be aware of them as you actually account for them. Now you'll notice that there are four transactions and they are all marked as unclear. Now the uncleared doesn't have any particular relevance to this particular video. It's just that we created these transactions manually. Typically, you would download these transactions from your financial institution or from PayPal. So what's going to happen is that for every sale that you make that an affiliate promotes and actually generates a commission, you're going to have four different transactions associated with that sale. You're going to have the sale, and you'll see I've highlighted it here, where you've actually earned the sale amount you are actually going to have a fee that you pay to the affiliate network. You're going to have a fee that is associated with a payment made to PayPal. And you're going to have the affiliate commission that you're actually going to pay and that's actually going to have a name there. Now when this happens, you'll want to make sure that the expenses are exactly what you want them to be and exactly how you want them reflected on your income statement. However, getting these transactions right the first time means that in many cases, you will be able to memorize the payee and when future transactions come over, they'll actually come into the right account. So what you want to do first is you'll note that you're going to have a fee that you'll see there that you'll have a name and a fee and typically that's actually going to be a PayPal fee. And so you'll want to change that from the name to an actual PayPal fee or a fee that you're going to be paying to PayPal. And if you want to keep track of this, you're going to have to name this specifically as a transaction fee. Now you may notice that Quicken does not necessarily have a separate expense called transaction fee. So we're going to have to create a new category called transaction fee. And we're going to call it an expense. Now, in order to keep it on the business side of our 
accounting, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make this a subcategory of an existing business expense. And typically, the easiest one to do would be a miscellaneous expense. And we are going to come back and we are going to change it. But for now, we want to make sure that it's in the right place and it is a subcategory of something that is in our business set of expenses. So now we're going to click Save. And then we're going to click Save the Transaction. What we're next going to do is we're next going to take a look at the affiliate payment. And we want to make sure if we're going to track this as an affiliate payment, and we want to know at the end of the year how much we've paid to affiliates according to our accounting system, we want to make sure that we keep this in a separate area. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, again, we're going to create a business expense. We're going to create a new category. And we're going to create a separate line item. Now, again, what we're going to do is we're going to make this a subcategory to start with. And we're going to put this with the miscellaneous expenses for now. We're going to make this a subcategory. And we can actually write a note to ourselves so that we know what it is. We're then going to click Save. And we're going to save the transaction. We also have a transaction fee that we pay to the affiliate network. We can actually notate this as a specific transaction. And we can do that just as we have done the other expenses. And then we will also make this a subcategory of our miscellaneous expenses. And again, this is going to be temporary. We are going to come back and change this. We're going to save this transaction. And the payee is actually the person who actually purchased the product. Now, we can actually designate this as a specific kind of sale. And we can do that just as we have done, except we're going to actually create this as a business income item. And we're going to make this a subcategory of an existing business income item. And then we'll click Save. And then we will save the transactions. So we have now done the first stage of accounting properly for an affiliate transaction. What we need to do now is to make sure that our categories are actually going to reflect correctly or exactly the way we want them to do. And we will do that in the next video. Okay, so with that, thanks. And I will see you in the next video. Welcome back. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to designate separate categories that actually reflect where we want this information from these affiliate sales to be reflected on our income statement. And to do that, we're going to go to the tools area, and then we're going to go to our category list. And we get to the full list, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the tax related only category list. And what you're going to notice is that when we pull down, you'll notice the categories that we've already created. You'll see JVZU Affiliate Sales Commission, Sales Commission, and Transaction Fee. So we see all of these things within miscellaneous expenses. But what we want to do is we want these to appear on separate line items on our income statement. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that these are reflected in the areas where we actually want them to be. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and then edit. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to an expense. So it'll have its own line item, but we actually do need to go into the tax reporting. And even though most of this information you want to work with your tax professional on, just to make it appear in a separate line item, we need to go into this area and we need to designate that this is a tax related category and we need to designate a specific line item for the category. And so we're going to use the drop down menu and what we're going to do is we're going to find the most relevant expense category and typically you're going to find a schedule C category and you're going to use that schedule C category to turn this into an expense that will actually appear as a separate line item. 
So what we're going to do is turn this into an advertising expense. And we're going to click Save. Now what you're going to notice is that when we go back to the register, and we're just going to slide this over, that the JVZoo Affiliate Sales Commission now appears as its own line item and its own category. And what we can do is we can memorize these transactions so that as we download them more frequently, Quicken will make a guess as to what's really happening with the transaction and autofill some of the transactions when they come over. And so now what we want to do is we'll want to go back to the other expenses that we had and we want to actually turn them into their own line item also. And so in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the transaction fee. We're going to click edit. We're going to change this to an expense. We're going to go to the tax reporting and then we're going to create the right line item. And we're going to call this an unspecified business expense and click save. Because we're basically keeping track of this information internally, we just want to be able to look at it at a glance so that we can tell what's happening in our business at any particular point in time. So we can continue to do that for any of the categories that we actually want to break out into a financial statement line so that we can analyze what's really happening. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You can use Quicken to account for any borrowing that you do for your business. And while you can get a small business loan or a traditional loan of some kind, it's more likely that you will open a credit card in order to make a specific purchase. So in this video, that is what we will work with, that you will attain a credit card and then use the funds for that credit card in order to purchase something for your business. So in that case, what you're going to do is you're actually going to click add account. You'll then click credit card. Now you can typically automate the process by finding your financial institution and adding the credit card that way. What we're going to do is we're going to put this in manually and we're going to enter our transactions manually. And we're going to click next. And we're going to state that this is going to be primarily for business. So we're going to click that and we're going to place the statement balance as a particular point in time as zero. And we're going to click next. And now we're going to click finish. And if you were to look at your business balance sheet, you'll notice now that in the liability section, there is the credit card to make a business purchase at a zero balance. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to the credit card account and we're going to make a purchase. So what we're going to do is we're going to now create a purchase for a particular educational product. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually make this a business expense. So we're going to place this in the supplies area. And remember, we can actually come back and we can create a different category that is more specific if we want to track it separately. So we're actually going to go ahead and put a tag in here because we want to place more information rather than less. So we're going to write in a tag that tells us exactly what it is that we have actually purchased. Quicken is going to have us actually write a tag in here. And this is optional. You don't have to do this, but it will help to have in the future. Now, since we use the credit card in order to buy this coaching, we're going to go ahead and write in what we were charged for the actual coaching program. We tab over. You'll notice that the amount is going to be $4,800. And we're going to click Save. And so our balance now for the charge account is now $4,800. Now, if we look at our income statement, we're going to notice a very large expense, and that is our coaching purchase, $4,800. If we look at our balance sheet, we now see that there is a $4,800 liability 
that offsets all of the other assets we have because actually what we need to do is when we have the $4,800 we can actually take from our assets to pay off that credit card. And so what the balance sheet gives us is an accurate reflection of what our business is doing for us or what we need to do to improve our business. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. When we get the credit card statement, we will find that typically there is a finance charge that's involved. And so we want to be able to reflect that on the actual statement. Now, if you're downloading all that information from your financial institution, it'll actually be brought into your credit card statement. However, we're going to enter it manually so that you can actually see what happens. We're going to write in that the payee is a finance charge. Now, when we account for the finance charge, we are actually going to add this additional finance charge to the actual balance. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use the category that our credit card is in because we don't want to account for it in our income statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the category of our credit card and we're going to write in here that it's going to increase our category. And so we're going to click save and you'll notice now that what happens is that our balance increases. However, we haven't increased our expense category. So let's take a look at our balance sheet. So you'll notice now that our balance sheet has increased based on the amount of the finance charge. But the expense that we incurred actually stays the same because we haven't really paid out any cash. So we have an accurate reflection of what has happened and now we know where our business stands. So we'll now click save. And what we're going to do now is we're now going to make a payment to this account. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our business checking. And we're going to make a payment to the bank. The category that we're actually going to make the payment to is going to be our credit card account. We're going to make a payment of $200. And then we're going to click save. So what we've done now is we've reduced the balance by $200 after we incurred the finance charge, but this $200 is not an actual expense. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, any outsourcing expense that you incur should be fairly straightforward. And you'll start with the account that you are going to make the payment to the outsourcer from. So if we decide to pay by check or by card, we will write in the name. We'll then need to choose a business expense category to take it out. So we'll need to clear all the split lines here. And then we'll choose the most appropriate category. And then we'll write in the amount and then click save. And basically we will have covered everything that we need to do in order to cover any outsource expense. And we'll want to make sure though that we are covering this correctly with our tax professional. But in terms of what we're spending, we will be reflecting this accurately on our income statement as well as our balance sheet. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, Quicken does not necessarily have a function for you to be able to track inventory for resale. However, there is a workaround when you have a retail operation that requires you to track a minimal number of pieces on a manual basis. So we can actually do that by going to the account button. And what we're going to do is we're going to click the other asset category. We're going to request that this would be a business transaction. And we're going to write in the name of the asset. When we do that, we're going to click next. We're going to pick a date to start tracking. And we're actually going to set the value initially at zero. And then we're going to click next. 
we're going to say no there isn't a loan and click next and then we're going to click finish now quicken has a rare vase category and it's now valued at zero so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the account that we're actually going to make the purchase of the vase in order for resale so we're going to go to our cash on hand account and it would actually work for any payment account we're just using that one for this example so what we're going to do is we're going to write in here the category and we're going to search for our rare vase category and we're going to state that we are paying fifty dollars for the vase and we're going to click save now what we've done is we've reduced our cash balance by fifty dollars and now we have a vase that's valued at cost at fifty dollars now because this is a cumbersome process you can understand why you'd want to use a different system if you are going to have lots of inventory that you are going to want to account for so now in the next video we're going to go through the process of actually selling this inventory asset and accounting for the receipt of funds. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, let's assume that you actually received $150 cash for the actual vase. So what we would do is we would account for that by using the cash on hand account. And we would account for this as business income. So we would account for this using one of our business categories. And we would state that we received $150. And we would click save. Now we've already paid out the $50 and that's already been accounted for. Now the only thing that has not been accounted for is the fact that the vase is no longer in our possession. So what we would need to do is to go to the vase account and then we would close out that account by decreasing the value by $50 and then clicking save. That would bring the balance to zero. What we would do then is go to the rear vase account, edit the account, and then we would go to our display options. We can either hide the account or close the account. And if we can close out the account, and then we can write in YES. And you'll notice that our balances are still the same in our cash on hand account, and we have properly accounted for the VAS. And once again, this is a cumbersome process if you have lots of inventory. And if you only have a few pieces and they're rare, you can actually use this method in order to have Quicken Home and Business account for the purchase. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Believe it or not, Quicken can be used to track the value of your Bitcoin. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a few steps to open a Bitcoin account inside of Quicken so that you can track the value of this currency based on when you purchased and how much you have. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the plus button and then we're going to actually open a brokerage account. We're going to go to the advanced setup and then we're going to actually enter our transactions manually. We're going to give our account a name and if we'd rather track for personal we can do that or we can actually track for our business and then we'll click next we're going to start with a statement date and a cash and money market balance of zero then we're going to click next Quicken is going to ask us for a password and what we're going to do is we're going to write in our ticker symbol and the ticker symbol is specific it is N Y X B T and we're going to tab over and then we're going to click next we're going to say no we're not setting up a separate mutual fund account 
and then we're going to click finish. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our Bitcoin account and we're actually going to either enter transactions as of today or when we know we actually made a purchase. So let's do that right now. So let's assume that we purchased one tenth of a Bitcoin at the beginning of every month since August. So for example, if we go to August, we write the security name and we write in 0.1. What we're going to do is then we're going to enter and done. Quicken is going to ask us for a password. We're then going to click OK. You'll notice then that according to the value as of this day, that our Bitcoin account would have $790. We would enter another transaction and we would look for September. We would again write in the Bitcoin index. We would write in 0.1. And we would do the same thing, enter and done. We would then write in our transaction password. And you'll notice that our value changed again. We can then write in another transaction as of October. So basically for tax purposes, you have a record of when you actually made the purchase and this may be important depending on how the rules are set for taxation, but you are also able to track your total inside of your Quicken account. If you now look at your balance sheet, you'll notice you have a Bitcoin investment now of $3,000. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video.